Hello, fans of racing and entertainment. Welcome to another exciting live broadcast. I am Steve Stillman, and I will be your host for today. As you can see from the very amateur drone footage, we're at the Irwindale Speedway in California. With an invitation to see John the Shoe Smith race again, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. How wrong could I be? I'm sure Irwindale has some very nice people, but the race and this track are really not what we were expecting. You'll see why as the drone begins panning the starting grid in the background. Oh, I worry about my career. At the last minute, in place of our race analyst, our producer found a drummer, actor, and I think most of you will recognize him. Our guest host today is none other than Tommy Lee of a little metal band you may know as Motley Crue. What's up? Yeah, glad to have you with us at this uh, unorthodox race. We got uh, the opportunity to open up for Ozzy. Yes, that would be unorthodox for my world, but I know that both Ozzy Osbourne and Molly Crew have a lot of fans out there. Introducing our broadcast team for today, my co-host John Thornton, who didn't even make this trip, is absent, and Tommy will be taking his place. From the pit area, Sarah Peterman, which there's no pit area here, so we're not likely to talk to her. Producer Ian Gill, and technical director, who drives me to the crazy train, eh, did you like that? Richard Payne. It actually makes me happy that he's in a hot, smelly tin shack out back. <laughs> Is that wrong of me? I remember meeting him for sure. You've met Richard Payne? And you. I think you met Ian, my producer, with me about five minutes ago when he pulled you from the crowd. That's so <laughs> rad. Yes, uh, let's get on with the broadcast. Like I alluded to earlier, this race is very unorthodox. Not only is it within an oval track, but cars have two turnarounds right here in front of us. You'll see why that's important pretty soon. Even more unorthodox are the cars, and I use that term loosely. Drivers can have any vehicle with wheels that cost them less than $10,000. That's it. That's the only stipulation. Some have strong engines with lots of horsepower, others are just big hulking machines, and others have strong roll cages and armor plating. This should be interesting at a minimum. As a bonus, we have several movie stars that are present in this race. Highlighting a few are O.J. Simpson and Eddie Murphy. Here's a clip of O.J. Simpson Norbert. as Officer Norbert getting a hearty hey, congratulations. Hey, hey, hey. Says I should be on my bean and as good as new in a week. And back on the force. Norbert, that's wonderful. Whoa! Come, Frank. Everyone should have a friend like you. And this clip shows Eddie Murphy getting a taste of how the rest the of the world city. lives. Life, real life, a thing that we have been denied for far too long. Good morning, my neighbors! Hey, fuck you! Yes! Yes! Fuck you, too! I've never seen somebody that dedicated to nailing something. Yes, uh, nailing something. <laughs> I, I pinch myself on a daily basis. <laughs> A couple of non-traditional rules exist here. Drivers are to stay in their vehicles until the end of the race, even if the vehicle is disabled, but just for safety reasons. And crashing is expected. To me, another problem exists that the drivers can choose their own number and several have chosen the same number, really. The governing body here doesn't mind, so we have to iterate the numbers on the leaderboard to help you as the audience. Audience, so who's your favorite driver as we head into the start of the race? Comment below. At the Irwindale Speedway, they use a standing start so the cars line up in order of qualifying place, which was determined by the drawing of names from a hat. As you can see, many emergency vehicles are present at the track, and I expect them to be in good use. All the cars are ready, and we're waiting for the lights to go green. And the lights are green. The race at Irwindale Speedway is underway. That's so rad. We're off to a good clean start at the first turn. You can see a variety of vehicles and their acceleration. Well or lack thereof. I predict this first turn around is gonna be very difficult on some cars. Let's see how many dive down the inside and crash into each other. Oh look, most of them. That's so rad. It isn't pretty and I'm not sure how the cars are gonna be able to continue after that. But I asked Peter North, I'm like, he's at my house right a party and I'm like, dude, how the fuck do you, when you fucking come, do you hit the front of this truck from here? Like, how is that possible? Isn't he a porn star? Well, he goes, I'll tell you my secret. Sticks in a blender, two bu two bu bushels, like the whole thing of celery. I can't believe we're talking about this. How could a stalk of celery help in that regard? And not one, but two. They'll also drink about a gallon of um, pineapple juice because that makes your fucking cum taste sweet. Oh my goodness, truck parts are going everywhere after hitting that combine harvester. That was a huge accident. The car's going head on like this. I'm not sure how many are even going to finish this race. My guess is only 10 will finish. I hope they have enough safety structures in those vehicles. Nobody gets killed. 
Ooh, poor OJ. It looks like his Bronco is being used as a punching bag out there. It looks like the slope of the track will help him flip back over. Nope. I think that he's out of the competition. <laughs> this Jeep's wheel is a bit out of alignment. <laughs> it's really cool. It probably makes steering challenging. Oh, that's not a problem anymore with no front tires. Count that Jeep out of the race. A drifting harvester is never something anyone thought they'd ever see. The limo's kept it pretty clean so far, keeping him in the lead of the race. Looks like he might thread the needle. Ah, nope. Nope. Not so rad. Sure. Molly Crew had a number of hit records in the 80s and 90s, which is the most uh, like special for you personally. I, I do not have my first gold record, it's, and I, I know it. It's scratched up and f***ed up and <laughs> chopping up so much f***ing gack on, and I f***ing gave it away, and I don't remember it to who. How are some of these cars still driving? Emma Skull Smith doing donuts in a semi. Again, I never thought I'd see anything like this. Since we're watching John the Shoe Smith, I want to remind the audience of another race he drove in. He literally ran out of gas on the last lap and was on the side of the track when he produces a bottle of bourbon from somewhere, put it in the gas tank. He continued for another mile until the engine seized up several hundred feet from the finish line. It was tragic. This is fucking cool, man. Tommy, do you have any crazy driving stories? Fourth gear, popping wheelies, fucking till the wheels fall off, just running it. So it was about like this race. How fitting. Oh, snap! That accident may have taken out Smith and others. So, Tommy, there's rumors of like, special items that venues had to have when you played there, like rumors of brown M&Ms. What's behind those rumors? Well, definitely the, uh, there was a, a pretty strict booze rider. There was always Jack, always beers. Um, this is rhetorical, uh, but what does Griswold and the family truckster nothing, think he's going to do against like a semi and an brown RV? M &M. Does he have a that's death That's pretty fish? much it. Like, yeah, there's no, like, special requests. There is, yeah, um, socks. You required extra socks at concerts? Get some next level sh Let's ride along with Eddie for a couple seconds. Holy mother of all that is holy. That was quite a hit to both of us. And he's down. And he's back up again. Wow. That ice cream truck is a bit like a tank. With the tires, of course. I'm sure it's air conditioned to keep all that ice cream cold. Home Sweet Home held like the number one slot for like fucking months, dude. We're like, dude, give somebody else a chance. Are you referring to MTV in the 80s when they still played music videos? That was when Motley Crue's popularity skyrocketed. Were you expecting that kind of popularity? No, we had no idea. We're just basically fucking a bunch of kids just hanging on. When that happens or when you start getting recognized in public or, you know, you start to realize, Zowie. oh, whoa, man, it's different. We went from playing, you know, 400 seat whiskey go-go style shows, clubs, to playing oh, 15,000 wow. people every fucking night and it just it was that that's when the, that's when the fucking blew up popularity has its cost and this and slash will tell you this to this day we're sitting there and slash is starting to get fucked and he just right at the bar at the bar just right in between him and duff just like uh, uh, just blows chunks and he's like okay i'm back <laughs> That's horrible. Nikki and I grab him, we take him, we carry him up to his room, his hotel room, with keys in his pocket, get it out, open his room, can lay him down on, on the bed, face up. And Nikki goes, dude, let's get a picture of this. So Nikki jumps up on the bed, pulls his pants down, and puts <laughs> Nikki puts his balls like right on right on Slash's chin. Right there. And I fucking rip a Polaroid. <laughs> Okay, let's stop there. This is getting less kid-friendly by the second. Besides, we're watching Billy Bob Buggy race to the finish line. Oh, crash! It couldn't be that simple, could it? He still crosses the finish line first. While there's many cars left in the race, I think only a few are on the lead lap. John Smith, with three functional wheels, crosses the finish line in second place. And our ever-lovable Eddie Murphy is in there too. To wrap this up on the podium today is... First place, Billy Bob Buggy. Second place goes to John Smith. And holding on to third place, Eddie Murphy. Congratulations to them and the rest of the drivers. Audience, in the comments below, be sure to vote for who you thought the driver of the day was. This concludes our broadcast for today. Tommy, thank you for filling in for my absent co-worker. I hope you enjoyed your time. Do you want to do this again sometime? That was a fun process, but I'll never do it again. Yeah, it was a process.
Yes, thank you guys. Man. Please consider giving to the Alzheimer's Association so they can accelerate global research for early detection and maximizing quality care and support for those in need. There's a link in the description below. As a final thought I'd like to share with the audience, laugh at yourself. It tones your facial muscles and attitude. Until next time, we're out of here. I think we're going to need some morphine for a few of these drivers. Even more unorthodox, even more unorthodox, the government body, the government drivers are, drivers are to stay. Man, I need to change this. A drifting harvester, that's never something anyone would like to see. Oh, thought they'd see. That was when Motley Cruz skyrocketed. Audience, in the comments below, be sure to who you Oh, shack.